A not-so-new claim is being regurgitated all across the globe these days, and it goes a little something like this. There's so much pain and suffering in the world, there can't be a good God. Well, let's dive in. But before we do, let me tell you, this is the fastest response to this claim known to man and is merely a plain, kind of logical, and no way comprehensive one hurled upon you sans emotion and utterly lacking gentility. This is debunked, after all not de nice. Okay, we're going to break this claim down in two parts and respond in rapidly rational rhetoric, rightly rendering reason right before your very eyes. Two little duck ducks all in a row. Let's knock them down. Duck numero one. A good God wouldn't allow pain and suffering. Really? Why not? Seriously, what if the temporal nature of pain and suffering was actually necessary to accomplish a greater eternal thing? I mean, that's how the Apostle Paul understands it. Listen to his words. But we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame. He continues with, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. And he brings it home with this, for this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. So Paul realizes, at least from a Christian perspective, that pain, suffering, and trials are real but temporary, necessary in preparing us for something greater, and not worth even comparing to the eternal life God grants us through Christ. Now, my pal Mr. Lewis, CS, not Jerry, wrote this, God whispers to us in our pleasures, speaks in our consciences, but shouts in our pains. It is his megaphone to arouse a deaf world. A duck dose. If there is a God, he doesn't care about us. Otherwise, he wouldn't allow pain and suffering. Okay, here's a bit of history and context for clarity coming at you solo style unless the 12 parsecs. God creates a beautiful, good, sinless, and perfect universe for us to live and flourish in. We utterly destroy it by our own free will. Then we keep on committing horrible crimes against him and each other even though we know better. But he doesn't lop off our heads the minute we do something bad. He's patient with us and pursues us in love. Steps into time and space as the God-man, Jesus, gives his life for ours, takes on the punishment we deserve by dying on a cross, then conquers sin and death when he resurrects from the dead, allowing anyone who repents of their sins and places their trust in him to be redeemed, restored, renewed, and live in paradise with him forever, even though we don't deserve it. Now, does that sound like a God who doesn't care? I think not. Ah, that's fine and all, you say. But I can't see a good and morally sufficient reason why this particular bad thing happened to this person, so I don't believe there's a good God. So answer me this. What percentage of all there is to know do you know? Now let's say you know 0.001%, which is pretty liberal considering you and all there is to know. The God described in the Bible knows 100% of all there is to know. Somewhere in that gaping chasm between the little you know and all that God knows, you're telling me there can't be a morally sufficient or good reason why God might allow something bad to happen? You're banking on the impossible chance that you know more than God. So you're telling me there's a chance. No, Lloyd. No chance. And I end with this because I want to. In Job 38-41, through 41, God asked Job, a man who went through untold sufferings but started questioning God's motive and character, a series of questions. Here's my fave. Can you bind the chains of Pleiades or loose the cords of Orion? Do you know the ordinances of the heavens? Can you establish their role on earth? Paraphrase, I create stars and planets, bro. I establish all laws out of thin air that govern the universe. And you want to question me? Well, Job gets it and says this, Behold, I am of small account. I know that you can do all things, and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. I have uttered what I do not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I do not know. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. I don't know, but maybe this should be our position when it comes to questioning God about things we have little capacity to fully understand. It might be a bit wiser to do what the psalmist says and trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Because honestly, when it comes to comparing our knowledge to God's, we don't know Jack. But we can know Jesus, the ultimate remedy for all pain and suffering and the one that will put an end to all evil. And that is that on that. This claim that there can't be a good God if there is pain and suffering, this faulty notion that God doesn't care about us, has been utterly debunked. Adios. This video was fully funded by a generous donation. To keep debunked videos free, please consider a tax-deductible donation or reach out to us to sponsor a video.